Welcome to Blood Bath and Beyond. Today we review the indie horror film Axe to Grind, where we learned that we should not fuck with Debbie Rashan. Brought to us by Midnight Releasing, directed by Matt Zattel, and starring Debbie Rashan. Axe to Grind is about Debbie Rashan, a scream queen who feels betrayed by her ex-husband and is now taking it out on the actresses of her current film. So what do we like about this film? I'm gonna start with Debbie Rashan's character. She essentially played her scream queen self and she just fucking went crazy and started killing everybody and that's kind of what we wanted to see and I, they delivered. She did a better job in this movie than I think she's done in some of the other movies that we've seen. I felt it was a, almost a commentary on the industry where Debbie Rashan was almost saying you shouldn't need to sleep with people or have sex just to like gain an advantage in the industry. You should do it on pure talent and not on just who you sleep with. Don't suck your way to the top, like get an ax and threaten your way to the top. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really enjoyed the location of this film. I thought the setting really set the mood, especially how they use the cinematography and using the security cams to see what's going on. They really played the setting perfectly in this film. And what's neat, we saw it in the credits, is actually filmed at like an abandoned hospital. And I like that they were self-aware. If we're shooting in the hospital, why is this film called Bayou Butcher? Because it's cheaper to shoot here. Won't the audience wonder where the hell the Bayou is? Sweetheart, if the audience is concerned with where we are, then you're not doing a job of flashing those lovely tatas. Okay. I liked how they introduced the Scream Queens. It just shows them doing something that's very seductive, and the titles of their films were like Double D Terror. Speaking of the women, they were gorgeous. All of the women in this film were gorgeous. <laughs> From like some of the opening scenes, we got a nice uh, Tawny Amber Young like cameo while she walks out with her little shirt, and it was fucking <laughs> awesome. We had a Rachel Robbins cameo at the end as the lawyer, and Nikki, played by Danny Thompson. Oh, she had she the, the best uh, one. She, she had like the uh, gratuitous <laughs> nudity scene, which was the only one in the film. And it's kind of cool to see a movie kind of based around sex not being too sexually or Oriented. It almost would have been almost counterintuitive to start showing nudity. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was more they wanted to show it in like the intro to introduce like some of the actresses that were in the film. I'm really glad that they didn't show a whole lot of nudity. Like I felt all the females were cast perfectly in this film. Paula Liberides and Michelle Tomlinson, their characters were great opposites to Debbie Rashawn's characters. Like you have Delilah, who is like the young and up and coming scream queen. Meanwhile, we're getting Cheryl's character, who is that tough dominatrix who's fighting against Debbie Rashawn in the middle act. So it was just a nice tie in to show how everyone's trying to crawl to the top. I also love the performance of Norman, played by Adrian, I think it's pronounced Quihouse. I didn't get this till the very end, but I've got, in hindsight, a very Norman. Bates feel from him, how he just like worshiped this like older woman. So I kind of hope that's where the filmmaker was going with this, and I thought it was done amazingly well. Well, there wasn't like a ton of gore in this film. What we did see was pretty solid. I commend them for that. So what didn't we like about this film? One of the big things, and this is probably nitpicky, they were shooting this film with two cameras. The color profiles of each camera didn't sync with each other. So you have one that's like super contrasty, and then it would cut to like say an over the shoulder shot of somebody else talking, and it would be a flat profile, and it did happen a lot of the movie. For the majority of this movie, I thought it was going very well. Like, it was really fast-paced, and I really understood what was going on. But then, there'd be these scenes where I thought they were kind of unnecessary or a little too long. Like, the guy trying to fight to get through the door because Debbie Rashawn had kind of locked the door. So I thought some things could have been tightened up. I found the pacing in the story is really what drew me back from this film, especially the parts with Debbie Rashawn and Matthew James Gulberson, who played Peter in this film. I liked that we saw the interaction with him being tied up at first, but then constantly going back to it, I didn't need to see that because I knew she had him hostage. This kind of movie, I thought, deserved a little bit more on-screen kills. If it was just cut a little bit differently, it would have appeared like it was on screen. It would have added nothing to the budget at all. I found the character development to be a little weak in their delivery. At the beginning when we were establishing all the characters and the hate towards Debbie's character, it didn't really fully play out in how I expected it it should have. There's not that real cattiness when they're all together. And I thought if they fought more as a group, 
it would have been better developed with their characters. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. I really liked Dax and Ryan. Going into this movie, I didn't think that it would have such a cool twist on the genre. I loved the female cast, and I thought the overall themes were really on par with what they were trying to get at. The kills were cool, I thought the gore was awesome, and the overall story was okay. I just thought it could have been a little bit tighter, like they had a little bit too much extended scenes, and the story went on for a little bit too long. So with that said, I'm gonna have to give this movie three and a half axe collections out of five. This was a pretty solid indie slasher. We had some great performances from these relatively unknown actresses and actors. Uh, we had a stellar performance from Debbie Rashawn, and we had a pretty unique take on your standard slasher or revenge film, being that it's kind of true to life. I think there could have been a few more on-screen kills, and I think some of the editing choices with the light leaks and some of the quick cuts could have been changed up to make more of an impact, but I think this is probably worth checking out for a lot of you guys. So I'm gonna give this three really awkward lipstick maps out of five. Axe to Grind was a good film. The cast delivered perfectly. I was really into their characters, but I felt the story wasn't as well executed. I'm really hoping that they turn this into like a franchise because I think Debbie Rashawn as this scream queen killer would be a really cool way to build off of this. And it kind of makes fun of the whole genre itself and being fans of that, we can make fun of it and we can enjoy it at the same time. So that being said, I'm gonna give this film three scream queens in action out of five as always thank you for watching like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film and if you haven't seen it we recommend that you check it out in the description below we have a link where you can go purchase it check out midnight releasing stuff they're generally pretty solid and to stay up to date with everything else we're doing here on bloodbath and beyond make sure you subscribe